You give me praises instead of despair. Oh, you clothe me with wonder again, Lord. You save me, and you there is peace for my soul. In every season, I'll hold on to you, cause I know. another amazing Sunday, an opportunity for us to praise and worship the Lord, the King of Kings together. Let us join the band as we lift up his name. of Kings together. Let us join the band as we lift up his name. Good morning, CRC. Are you ready to praise God? The Lord is with me, so I have everything that always leads me, so there is nothing that I will fear. All the days of my life, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy overflowing forevermore. We raise and we raise all our praise the name of the Lord. We raise and we raise all our praise to the name of the Lord. Everybody sing it louder. Everybody lift it higher. Give your praises to the King. We raise and we raise all our praise 
shepherd, my protector, that's my king, that's my rock, that's my Oh! 
giving everything. Come make our hearts tender. We yield and surrender to the only
We pray this morning that we will lift your name higher wherever we go, whatever we say, whatever we think, whatever we do will be for you, Jesus, this morning. Tomorrow morning will be all about you. Tuesday will be all about you. Wednesday, Thursday, then we'll not come yet. Father, in this morning, only but our lives and every moment will be about you, Jesus, about your glory, Father, in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, give God a bigger shout of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shout of praise. Shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, He died on the cross for us. He gave everything for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome everyone watching online on YouTube Live. Awesome to be with you and speaking with you where you drive in your car, to your fishing trip or wherever you go. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you right there. So, and then here in this house, everyone that is here, please let us give uh, new visitors, all our new visitors, a great hand of applause. And it's awesome to have you with us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And I just want to thank the, um, the, our sound desk. You will see there's new lights. Neti Rivet Sports is a belief. There's Baye, Baye Eritiaran. Um, so you can see the screens is back on. We get the lights on. So we are busy uh, upgrading or uh, replace. We not upgrade. We replace what was stolen by uh, our dearest ESCOM. So in any case, um, by the power up and down, the system blew. And now we have got a new system um, uh, running. And that helps me. And the lights is white and not gr uh, yellow like always. So that's a nice thing. We've got that. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's so nice. Okay, in any case, greet someone and you may be seated. As not, the title of my message is unbelievable, but that is, that's, that's the one. Uh, 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 I, you know, when I see something that is great, I go like, oh, that's unbelievable. Where's our youth and students? No, 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 no. We don't have to learn. 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 Why did you drop me? Um, it was perfect. Then you went down. Don't go down. It's like, if you, yeah, I must do a marriage seminar and then I will explain some things to you. Don't, when you up there on the high, suddenly stop. Can I have that thing, please? I don't know. Um, I want to do a demonstration. Just stand here and help me quickly. But in any case, um, so many of you know that I'm a, uh, I fish, I like fishing. That's part of what I'm doing. Um, but most of all, not, I'm a fisher of men. Uh, my main work is to see, um, to equip the church, the saints, us all together. I just want to see if everything is together here. Yeah? Okay, in any case, so, um, and then they told us, we had a fishing competition, and they told us, listen, it's going to rain. It's going to rain a lot. So, I don't like getting wet. I don't know about you, but I don't like getting wet. So, I asked uh, people to help me. I said, get me something. That will stop me from getting wet. So I, I do have. I have a. I have a. I have a, a, a rain suit like everyone have, should have. And um, but these things, you never keep drying them. You just, if it's raining, it's raining. And you sit literally in the middle of a dam, and it's raining. So I said, get me something that will keep the wheelchair dry, and everything else dry. Okay. So I'll show you how this thing works. So um, I am going to switch off the mic because it's going to make a lot of noise when I put this on. So bear with me. Awesome. Right, so here we are. Now look at this move. This is nothing yet. You, have, you haven't seen nothing yet. So now I can put the arms here. I put this thing around. Man, this is awesome. For fishing. So you can see, it can rain. It can come. I'm not afraid of the weather anymore. So we went fishing. We went fishing. Ha. Ha. The weather can come. The weather can come. It can come. So, so now underneath I have, I have warm clothes. Then, then I have my normal rain suit on. And then I've got this beast on. Well, for me it's a beast. You're just like, listen, cake. They come a rien, eh? And it will look like I'm floating. So if I put the arms in like this, you won't see it. You won't see it. But in any case, so, so this is it.
This is a nice thing. I, I like this. This is, this is one of the greatest additions. And it can rain on the back. It, just, it doesn't go into the wheelchair. It goes around the wheelchair. So I'm, I'm quite staying dry. This is a nice thing to have. I had to brag about this. This is only one thing. And then, and then, but here's the thing. So it could work wife mode as well. This one. For these guys that put the sound up and down and lights on and off quickly. Remember romance. You never do so sudden moves. You, it's, it's always like you get what I'm saying if you're married. So, but this has got wife mode. <laughs> you get it off like this quickly. You see? It clips on and off, this thing. So, look there. It's like, as you froze it, it's off, it's off. So, there we go. All right? So, that's it. So, very nice thing. Okay, thank you. That was it. I just want to brag about it. There's nothing to do with the sermon. It's just there. There's my heart in my car. You saw a big screen cake. <laughs> well, what I learned, what I learned is that if, even if your hair is nice or not on the boat, it doesn't help to catch fish. But that helped to keep the water out. Really, it helps to keep the water out um, if you have it with you. Because if it's in the car, like it was, it's useless. I've got it in the car. There I'm sitting in the rain. I have this amazing device to keep me dry, and it's in the car. I told you we should have put it on the boat. I told you. But yeah, we put it in the boot of the car, or at the back seat. Here we go, on the water. It starts raining, soaking wet. So that thing is useless when it's not being used. It means nothing. It kept the car dry. Not even. The car was wet. Not even inside of the car. And I was thinking about church this morning, about we have it. We have the Bible. We have Jesus, that we, whom we worship with everything. We've got His promises. We've got His blessing. We've got His protection. We've got everything, but we don't use it. It's there somewhere. Our Christianity, our worship to Jesus is there somewhere. Well, not you beautiful people sitting here, but the world... We all love Jesus, but we don't, can't say use Him, but we don't use Him. You get what I'm saying? It's almost like I have it. It's the most awesome, it's, it's the most awesome God, but there's so many other things that takes His place. There's so many other things that's way more important than, than God. We sang the song, we say, we say, He gets the worship, He gets the glory. He gets everything. Really? Does he really get everything? And I'm not saying that condemning. I'm asking. I'm asking that to myself. I would go like, is, is God that important that I will make every decision I make with him in mind? With what does he want for me? What is his view upon whatever I have in my life? What does God say about my morning? What does God say about my Monday? What does God say about my future, my family, my finances? What does God say? And then we will start searching everywhere and trying to find out answers for many things. And then we listen to everyone and everything. And we forget what we have. A Bible, Jesus in our heart, the Holy Spirit on the inside, church which God used. This is what God used. He used the church. To expand the kingdom of God. He, he, he works through this office to expand the kingdom of God. So if you come in here, you can't stroll. You can't, and I'm not saying you now as a member. I'm saying if we serve here. You can't come in late. You can't come in. It's, I'm proud of this house. I know that if I do my part, it will be, it is, it's my responsibility. Because I serve God. I, I, I do things for God. We've got a very busy week this week. Tomorrow night we have leaders meeting. The night after that, we have new members orientation. Then we have home cell. Then we have band practice and all these practices on Thursday. And Friday night, we have a half night prayer. It is this Friday. Yeah. I, I knew it wouldn't be on the fishing weekend. No. I do not even know. But what I'm saying is, are we using these things? Will I come to a leaders meeting tomorrow night and say, I want to be a greater leader. I want to be a leader in the kingdom of God. 
when, when it comes to new members orientation, let me just go sharpen myself up a little bit and bring my world and see what is this church about that I become part of the kingdom of God. It's a tool. Do I use that? Home sales. I feel so alone. I feel so frustrated. I did this and that. Are you going to home sell? Are you serving somewhere? And I don't give a list of things to do, but I give you what really helps you to accelerate in your spiritual growth. To be strong. If your spirit is strong, your whole life will be strong. I'm not saying airy fairy strong, like I believe God for a job, but I never apply for any job. I believe God for a job, and when you get the job, you just lose the job. I'm not talking about when you, when you prayed for God for this wife, and now she, He gave you the wife, but you abuse that wife. Or you, or you just abuse her by not being the real you. That's also abusive, I think. If we get married and we're not the person that we married to or married as. So it's like, now I'm married with you, now I can do whatever I want to. No, it doesn't work like that. I prayed for a job, now I got the job. Now what about this job? Do I apply myself? Do I study? Do I, do I get better as an employee? Do I get faster as an employee? When, when, my, when, my, when my superiors think about me they think oh man i can trust this person when when you take responsibility at any place someone you say i take that responsibility from you you can trust me are we trustworthy out there are we the people is the light shining when i'm a when i'm a when i'm in at the school can can those parents trust me to 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 teach their children not just anything just the 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 the, the curriculum but also life Am I at a place where I am a good steward so that when I get into heaven, I will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Now, in this whole thing, sometimes we do the, m- many of these things. I'm just giving examples. So we say, um, when I say spiritual strong, that means there, that spiritual strong. I serve like Jesus served. The Bible says, even, even if you're even if your, if your uh, employer is evil, you serve him. Not doing what he's doing. You serve him as unto Christ. Why? Because you can win him. He can see. This Christian does not judge me. This Christian doesn't put Bible verses all around their computer. And, but they are the ones scannering the most. They, they gossip the most. They, 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 they always difficult. They always late. If we late for things... That means we have zero respect for whoever we go to. I don't say late for reason now, if there can be reason. But I'm saying, if we, if we, if we get to a place and we, and we uh, 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 it's just late. You're just late, always late. Do you even have respect for yourself? You say, no, how, how is that, how's that to do with anything? Everything. When you're late, people judge you immediately. I was late for the fishing uh, so, uh, Friday uh, evening, Saturday morning, I was late, almost like an hour, late, half an hour late. And I thought that, and, and I, when, when my fishing partner got to me and he says, he says, I thought we're not going to go fishing. Oh, I had an emergency. So, so I go like, okay. Um, now I go, I say, sorry, 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 sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I really, you can have some of my coffee on the boat. I do have the best coffee on the boat. I say, I'm really sorry. And he says, yeah, man. Niaman is okay. I go like, yeah, you say Niaman. I know when you push that button, I do not answer that phone. You were angry. Or not angry really as such, but you were quite disappointed. You got to really like, you know, come on any. You always like, we not, should not be late. And now you're very, very late. You know, I, I think, I think you go like, here, can you glue I think possibly, possibly there was a WhatsApp being sent to the wife. Can you know, glo, ek sit hier voor pastoor sy huis en hy vraag dies antwoord nie. I can, I can imagine that, possibly because that's how I am. I would have had a judgment and some anger and some, yeah, my machtig, I'm going back home now. Seriously, how are you late? As if you were never late. You see now how I switch that one. I'm, you know, I'm in my own conf- confusion and conversation. The judgment. So you can say, yeah, man. But respecting means that I stop that kind of, no, he didn't do that, but I'm saying, I stop even that kind of thought over my life. And he's always late. 
and he is always uh, you can't trust him. He forget always alles. He, he always forgets. You ask him, oh, he and I get forget. No, I'm talking of respect for self. I'm talking of your whole life being a light shining out there. We're not always going to get 100% for our tests. We're not always going to be the, the A player on a, on, a, on a team like the, uh, to be the captain. But when you're on the team, just bring your part and, and do your thing as a Christian. Believe in God. Believe in yourself. Believe in the promises of God. When God gives you a job, when He gives you a child, when He gives you a husband, when He gives you, when he gives you something which you prayed for, take that thing and become. And don't use that thing as a weapon against Whatever that is. I see so many people get employed and then two weeks later they're so unhappy with a new boss. Well, without the new boss you don't have a job. A salary. And possibly he appointed you because you had a great attitude. But now the attitude has changed. And immediately he's disappointed. You are disappointed. And this is a bad thing. Now you get a bad rap. Please, if you're a youngster, if you're very young, don't jump job to job. Never do that. Never do that. You wait for God's appointment. You have respect for yourself. That people know when I appoint Henny, I can trust him. He will stay there. You know that when Pastor Adam sent me to Mbombella to plant the church here, he said to me, Henny, when I send you there, you stay there. You're not coming back to me three months and say, Yeah, Pastor, it's not in my dang day. You, make the, you count the cost. And you make a decision. And then, Henny, and pastor, I knew he can trust me. Or I think he knew he can trust me. That's what I, it's just me. Yeah, he can make trust. Can he? Well, I'm at least now 11, 12 years here already, so. But still, still you have to be able to trust me. Will I do this for the next 10 years? So I'm not now at 12 years here, I, I made it. No, 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 I will not even open that door for the devil. The way I think, my attitude on the inside. Can I do this? What do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about your own life? What do you believe? Is the belief so much that you will respect your own belief? I believe I will be the greatest drum player. Then, are you practicing the drums? Do you practice? Do you become a master in that? I believe I will run this company one day. Then you have to be like someone and become like someone that runs a company. You have to, to sharpen yourself if you have a business. If I had a business, the only way I knew I am going to make a lot of money in Bombella is just by giving service. Seriously. And make sure that the career is on time. I thought maybe I must, I must start a business, not me. Start a business or give someone an idea. Maybe you sit here, listen carefully. I give business ideas. Maybe make like, a, like a, a fast career company that if you want something from Joburg, you can have it the same day. A same day express to Nelspreet. You'll make lots of it. Lots of it. You charge. Charge them good. And sometimes, sometimes you really need that one thing very quickly here. And now, but in Bombella, you ask them, no, it takes, it, takes, it takes a month to get something here from Johannesburg. Two months from Cape Town. And only one week from Wish. <laughs> Gee, seriously. It's, it's, literally, it's a fact. You, it's a fact. I get things quicker from Wish than I get things from Johannesburg. Yeah. Pfft. It's like, see, it's just that. It's just that attitude. I'm just saying. You say you use the wrong career, maybe you're right. Maybe I shouldn't use any career. Just get in my car and drive and get the stuff I want. I'm just talking about life. I'm just talking about attitude. I'm talking about the will, the belief. If I believe in a child, I have to make the child. I have to do the hard work, the labor. Over and over and over. I know it's hard and it's difficult, but just do it. You get what I'm saying? Maybe there will be a child then one day. Yeah, I'm going to prepare all five years. And now, okay, stop doing what you're doing. And then I go like, no, why not? No, but then... You say you're tired, you, you, you give up. The worst words in this world is, I cannot. Or maybe they say to you, we've tried everything, but now, sorry. Cannot do this anymore. 
don't want to do this anymore. You, somebody entrusts you with something, you say, I, 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 I don't want to do this anymore. And like, it's like, yeah, let's not get to me and say, I don't want to make you coffee in, anymore in the mornings. I will, I will have a very bad time when you do that. Can people trust us? Can God trust us to build His kingdom? Us sitting here, can He trust us to go build that building? Can He trust us to buy that land? Can He trust us to have the best facilities? Wherever we're here, wherever we are. Can He trust us to go and win the souls of the city? Can He trust us to equip these people? And when I'm an usher, He can trust me to be an usher. Or when I'm the preacher, He can trust me to preach and bring the word, His word, and not tainted by my own opinions and my own things. Imagine I have to preach, and it's difficult to do. It's not to preach opinion and not to preach my own things and the things I hear in the world. It's, it's very difficult to stay on the narrow path in the sense of not doing so many. But the one of, I have to make sure that when I preach, I bring the, the true and the pure word of God without tainting it to get an applause or to get a, a hey, hey, oh, whoo. It's not what I'm, I'm living for or what we have to live for. The appraisal of people. The approval of other people. You need one approval and that's God's approval. But then, but then that's respect to God. That is respect to self. And the more we respect, respect your body. You respect your body by what we put on the inside of it. You, that's respect. Your spiritual growth. How strong are you spiritually? How strong are you financially? I'm not saying be a billionaire now. But at least... Your physical body, your, your, your family. How's your family? How's your friends? How's your social life? How's your social responsibility towards this world? It's important things. How's your career going? How's your business going? What is, if we have to plot all these things, there's like a few things and we plot them out. Your marriage, your family, your friends, your, 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 your spiritual life, church, home cell, prayer, you say, how does that now conclude spiritual life? Go read the Bible. Acts 2. That's what people do when they're Christians. They go to church. They read their Bible. They pray. They help one another. They love. They change their community. They're the light. They're the source. And God used them then to transform. I wish there can become a day that, that when a person say, now everyone in the world, they say, Pastor, of any, of Yelisna, of uh, Yandre, or Sarah, you can trust me. And you go like, that's it. The person said that. This person said that. I can just trust them. How many of us will... Well, well on, uh, you go on uh, Facebook Marketplace, you go there, and you, and you just pay, in, you pay money into the person's account. You just do that, and, and you hope the product comes to you. How many of us will do that? No, no, none of us. Why not? Hey, trust is a difficult thing. Why? Because we learned it's difficult to trust. Now, imagine a Christian world, a world wherein you can trust a person. This is what they say. Exigno, I'm there. And then they're there. What do we believe about our lives? I think, I think it's in the unbelief where the problem lies. I think it's in the unbelievable part where the problem lies. I, th I think it's with belief itself. Because belief in itself brings energy. Belief in itself brings fulfillment. Belief in itself brings salvation. Belief in itself. Just belief makes things happen. Beliefs, a uh, belief makes dreams come true. Just belief itself is a motivator. Belief itself has energy. Belief itself creates. Belief itself. The word, or the person using the word believe. I believe my husband will be better. I believe I will have this child. I believe 
they have a great future. I believe this church will grow. I believe that I will get a promotion at my job. I believe that they will pay my salary end of this month. I believe that I will be the greatest gardener in the city. I believe that I will be the greatest garbage collector in the city. I believe that I will be the greatest attorney in the city. I believe I will be the greatest doctor. I believe I will be the greatest husband. I believe that I will have the greatest wife. I believe. I believe when people and a Christian say yes and there is yes. And why? It's what Jesus said. We have started this year off with Jesus and following Jesus and to be a disciple, a disciplined follower of Jesus. We see now Jesus before he was even born. The whole Bible before that moment was written just for him for his coming to take people from their sin and take people from their old stinking lives and put them in a place of hope and put them in a place of belief and put them in a place of faith and put them in a place of power and put them in a place where they can be a light they can be the soul they can change this world the whole bible at the beginning was written for jesus then jesus came john the baptist leap in his mother's womb because he knew he had an appointment with Jesus and Jesus believed in John and said John is going to prepare the way and John did it without even speaking to Jesus he just did it why he believed on the inside who he is and what he is and what he should do that cost his life they cut his head off just because he believed but we know and we talk about John the Baptist today why Jesus influenced him he followed Jesus Jesus is the point of everything believe I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me that's just the beginning of Jesus then he got born and people came and flocking to him to see him and then at the age of 13 he knew exactly what his business was I'm at the about the business of my father why do you seek me? He said to his parents. He could not stay away from the church. He was there every Sunday. He knew the importance. As was his daily custom. He taught at the church. The synagogues. Jesus is amazing. And when John the Baptist, before he even started his ministry, he had to be baptized. And, and he says, no, 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 no. Permit us, but we do the right things with God. He knew that part. That's Jesus. He knows to do the right thing. And not to suppress and to explain everything, but just to know. We have to do what is right in the Father's eye. Then when he got baptized, God says out of heaven, he says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased, because God gets pleased by our faith. What is the faith? The belief. You're like for I trust you God therefore I do this and this and this not I do this to get into heaven we all understand that you do this and this and this so that you can be that person that God created you Jesus did, did do XYZ so that you can be in heaven you believe that your belief gets you into heaven your belief do you believe in the church do you believe in the church not in church or like in worship the church but do you believe the workings, the, the, the workings of the church? Do you believe in that? But you, if you, you say, yeah, but why are you not here? Who comes in here Friday on the midday birthday? Get right in. Who come come in Friday? Get all the other eight things come in Friday. Come in. Come birthday. Wednesday morning. When we pray Wednesday mornings, why why you not why you not here? Do you believe in what this thing is doing? This church? Are you believing me and you? Do we really believe the importance of this? It keeps me dry. So I put it on. It keeps me protected. It creates that my, my, my children. No, I can't bring my children. I a break it difficult. You're difficult. Your son was praying with us Wednesday morning. I I so jammer gekry in jou. I thought, nee man. Because we're just human beings. But there he had a great time. He was not even crying. He prayed with us. I was so blessed by that. But he could have left him at home. And he, he said that every time he's awake in the morning, he's going to bring them for prayer. So either one of the two things, he's going to start sleeping now. Or he's, he's, 
Ja, hij was crying when he didn't want to go to church. En hij blaast hem op en hij gaat op die straat. Ik want, ik wil kerk toe gaan. That's our children. But then the parents make the excuses for the children. Or use, worst thing, they use the children as an explanation. Are we, do we understand the importance of church? Young person. You don't come to church to get married. That's manipulation. Ek is nie een prostitiet nie. <laughs> nee, ek kom net kerk toe, want ek wil trouw. Ach nie, een sies man. That's like, and I guess what, you're any case going to come, let it fly. It's any case to come when you die, you have to come back again in any case. You have to bury you. So it's like, do you believe that the church is critically important in your marriage? Yes or no? Uh, yes. But, but, but how do I know it? I, I, I can only believe it when I see it. Or the world will know because they see it. How do, we, how do your neighbor know you're a churchgoer? How do they know? How do they believe you're a churchgoer? You leave the home. Every Sunday you leave your home. Every Sunday you leave your home. You come here. Or maybe you don't come here. I don't know, but at least just leave at the same time very early on a Sunday morning. Then they think you go to church. <laughs> It's like we miss this thing because we live in an unbelievable world. We live in a place where we don't believe. We don't believe in why is that? You have to believe in the Bible. You have to believe the importance of the Bible. Otherwise, why did you come with your eyelids to church this morning? You believe in the thing. Chaka 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 chaka. Brr. Then you come with it. Why do you lock your house? This morning, why did you lock your house? You believe there is coming people to steal your stuff. <laughs> That's a belief. Okay, b- please lock your house. And become airy fairy. Like me, my garage is open this morning. To anyone listening. <laughs> Couldn't find the remote. So, what do we believe? Do my wife know I believe in her? Does she know that? Can she feel me? Can she see me? I'm talking to all of us. What do we believe? What is your daily report? What is the daily report coming out of your mouths? How does it sound? What's your confession? What is the confession coming out of our mouths? Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What do we speak? Oh, it sounds like this. Ah, yeah. Can you know glue? I can't. Yeah, yeah, cake. I mean, sir. I almost died because of the car drive right in front of me. I almost died. It was so hard day today. I worked so hard today. And we get into this moaning and groaning. You believe the children were so naughty at school today. You know, it's like making me so tired. I worked so hard. And we get to this negative report the whole time. It's, I think it's the greatest addiction that we ever have is to be negative. And to moan and groan about everything. It's almost like people catch like a, a high out of... Uh, how it went to at work today? How it went at church? Today. How did it go? It's almost like we live in this judgmental life, and we make an unbelievable life because that becomes our reality. It becomes a place where we have stopped believing for the good and seeing the good in things, and we talk the negatives. We talk the things that we don't want, but we talk about them. We talk about Yanni wat al weer vandag nou. We talk about not the good things that Yanni did. We do not even talk about the great things that I saw Sarah did. I do not even talk about the awesome thing Tabu did today. I'm not even talking about that amazing thing that Yan did today. No, I talk about the negatives and I'm focused on the negative and the tired and yeah, yeah. I'm even not geworden. Yeah, just put the thing on. Just go to church for a little bit. 
Just tithe a little bit. Your finance, how's it going there? How's it going there? What do you believe about your finances? If you're near here, yeah, yeah, I was waiting for this one. Yeah. But I'm asking you, it's the, it's the raincoat. Your finances, your tithing, your offering is your raincoat. Your serving in church is your raincoat. Your reading your Bible is your raincoat. Why is it in the car? Your prayer every day is your raincoat. Your Bible study every day is your raincoat. Your forgiving one another is a raincoat. You're coming to church tonight, to this morning, listening to me. Or past that tonight. It's the raincoat. No, I'm wet. Yes, you do not put on the raincoat. You're not tithing. You're not believing. You're not offering. You all do now the uh, sessions that we are doing in the home cell, which will bless you. Just do that. Don't miss that now. Some of you go, yeah, but I'm going to be on a laser. Yeah, I thought you begin tithe. You say, you say, why tithe? I'm asking you, why don't you trust God? No, I do. I'll give him your 10%. Okay, I don't want to talk finances. It's stupid. It's in any case, the least thing in the kingdom, and then we talk about that. So we don't really have to talk about that. But it becomes a very big thing when I talk about it. Then it becomes a big thing. Dan is het a groot ding. Dan moet nie vir my geld vraag nie. Wat worship ons nou? Wat trust ons? Who do we trust now? It's important things. Forgiveness. That's bigger. It's bigger than the tithing thing, by the way. In my books. Not going to church is bigger than that. Not reading the Bible is way bigger than that. Not being able to be nice to people is, for me, way bigger than that. Why? Because the Bible says money is the least. And many fall at the least thing of the kingdom of God. They fall there, right there. In any case, I'm just saying that. Marriage. Sex outside the marriage. Destroy the marriage before you've even begun it. Ooh. Yes, it's a fact. It's a fact. But the, we're in a world that you may sleep together before marriage and stay together before marriage. You cannot. Why not? Not because God said that. It's not morally right and it destroys part of your future marriage so what do i do get married come to my office let me marry you but just make sure that's the person you want to be married with and by the way if you're not sure move out now because how do you stay with someone in comfort because you're not 100 sure if you're not 100 sure you should not even be there when i ask you let's not get married i knew this is him i want to marry you and I did it very quickly. What do we believe? What is the things we believe? I want to show you quickly two verses, three verses. I'm, I, I want to read this because it actually, I did the whole sermon. It looks like I'm still page one. I'm actually way past page one. But listen quickly to this. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. When it came down, uh, came to his own country, he taught them in the synagogue all the things I've said already now. Okay, you get, uh, so that they were astonished and said, they were astonished. Jesus talks astonished. And as he said, where did this man get the wisdom and these mighty works? Wow. This is, not the, is, that, is this not the carpenter's son? Is, he not, uh, mother called, is his mother not called Mary? And his brothers James, Joseph, Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they off, so they, they were offended at him. <laughs> they were offended. So, I'm offended. Listen carefully what is offended. They were offended. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house 
Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. We want God to do great things for us, but we don't believe. The belief is the seeing part. Paul said that in the Romans. He says, show me your faith. Show me your faith by your action. Not show me your faith, but no action. Faith of action. Belief of action. That is the power. That is the empowerment. That is the energy. So what do you believe about your life? All these areas. Yes, the importance part of that. I'm not going to read all of this, but I just want to talk. Numbers 13 talks about the Israelites when they had to go into the promised land. So they did not go. They had a report. They Listen, listen to this negative report. I'm, I quickly want to read this. So they, did, uh, they came back, the spies into the country, they come back. They went in the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. And this is for the fruit. Nevertheless the, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified. They are large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Can you believe it? Yeah, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites and Jebusites, the Amorites, um, as well as in the mountains of the Canaanites dwell by the sea. Ooh, this moeilijk young. Vandaag was a moeilijk dag. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and he said, Let us go and take possession for we are well able. I will do this job. I will give the best service. I will increase my health. I will increase my wealth. I will increase my be better person. I will be a better person. I will be spiritually strong. I will learn more about God. I will. I'm well able. I will do this. Not oh man, I can't hear any. I hear all. No, I can do this. And we go for these things. So in any case, but the man had gone up with him and said, "We're not able." There it comes unbelief. We're not able, for they are stronger than we. And they gave children of Israel a bad report for the land, which they bad report, bad day, bad talking. That's all these negatives, excuses and reasons and explanations. We have to get that out of our system because that creates our future. Your belief, your unbelief will rob you of your future. The one that God had for you. Because then he says, we are not able to go up, they are stronger. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land, spying out, saying, the land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw, what do you mean? I go some more break. This is a moan already. There we saw the giants. Can he do any captain? Oh. Oh man, I want to sleep here. Can I get up? I want to I want to get up. I want to I to That's how these people sound. I think there's only one place in the Bible that it sounds so negative. And it's like. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anna came for the giants, and we were like grasshoppers. We were Aramaic. That's not a work to from the I can't even look at me. My arms are sore. I'm tired. I didn't sleep last night. I went to bed at nine. I'm tired. I know it's seven o'clock, but I'm tired. I can't do this. I want to do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Can you hear? It's not there. You know, it's my favorite. And also, uh, this is very important. Let me close this book now <laughs> because it becomes very, very tiring. I hope you're not one of those people. Mona over alles. The problem in the camera is it's the wrong side. So on this screen, my hand, what is it there? On the right side, no. But on this screen is on the wrong side. So, so it's like, yes, yes, what it is about. Let me let me be honest. Remember, Jesus said it cannot be done. So we follow of Jesus. This is the next part. So I'm still following the list. So Jesus says this is the next part. The next part is stop your unbelief. Because I can do nothing for you if you don't believe. Your finances, 
That's why I talk your finances. What do you hold on when it's going bad in your finances? What do you hold on? What is the thing? Tell me. Call the bank for more debt? We all know that's not it. This is an example of a many other things. But this is easy because we all like in the money world. So, now it's going bad. The pipe burst at the house. The water flow. You have to pay that account. How? What do you fall back on? What do you fall back on in the marriage? The children. What do you fall back on? And I've met, I heard too many times where your listener will come to me and say, at least I tithe and I know I can trust God with my finances. Fall back on. Not, I tithe, so where's the money? Not that. But the faith and the belief it will be okay. It's going difficult in the relationship. But at least God told us to be married. So I trust God also in that. That child is difficult, but God gave us this child. We prayed for this child, so God gave us this child. So this child will be okay. You see, there's no unbelief. It is belief. Believe. I have something that I hold on to. God, I served you in my kingdom. I've talked to so many people that they, they, they cannot serve God suddenly because of a disability or something happened like previously now and, and the person lies there in the bed and the first thing I had to tell the person when I saw him, the first thing, he's, he's disabled now, he's uh, he broke his neck, the whole thing. And the first thing that me, just any van der Meer, not pastor, not nothing, just any. I got him when I saw him, I said, you're going to be fine, my friend. I remember how you served in White River when we built that church. You were there every night. You were there every day. You were there serving. Oh, man. You got some seat in the ground. God is going to open up for you doors that you've never seen in your life. Why? I just believe in Jesus. In His works and His things and in the church. It's a belief. He's fine. He's okay. He's going to make it. Why? I just saw His faith. Not tap into heaven, I want to hear what heaven have to say. No, I just, I've got the faith he believes in God. I said, you know, I know you believe in God. He says, yeah, I do. I said, yeah, I saw that. You know, f- from my side, just how lacquer is it to work. How easy it is to work with him. In that sense. I know you have a belief. If he could give up time to serve in the house. I, I, it's, listen. This is not manipulative for what I'm saying. I'm just saying, for me, any van der Merwe. I go like, gee, you made that so much time for God. I, th- I really think he's going to, no, I know he's going to make a lot of time for you. Special time for you. It's just, it's. Belief. So here is what I want to say. And then this is the finishing part. Bob the Boulder. Bob the Boulder. Oh man, I like him. He's one of my heroes. He, Bob the Builder is, is the man. <laughs> Everything breaks around him. Everything is negative. And then Bob just walks on there and he goes like, Can we fix it? Yes, we can. I just love it. I just love it. Amen. Can you live this life? Yes, you can. Can you conquer that sickness and disease? Yes, you can. Can you have that great marriage? Yes, you can. Can you have that great job? Yes, you can. Unbelievable. Will become your belief in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Come and praise God a little bit. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yes, we can build that building. Yes, we're going to fill that stadium. Yes, you're going to get that job you're praying for. Yes, you're going to find that husband or wife. Amen. Yes, that child will be perfect one day. One day, live this life because I dedicate them to God that morning in the church. Yes, we can. Amen. The question is, if you die today, where will you go? Will you go to heaven? Can you go to heaven? Yes, you can. 
But you need what? Faith. In what? In Jesus. You say, but is that possible? Yes. It's, uh, he did the job. He did the work. Can you get into heaven? Yes, you can. How? You make a decision to follow Jesus. You make the decision to follow Jesus. You believe in Jesus. Therefore, I do the things of Jesus. What is that? I go to church. I read my Bible. I pray. I do the church thing because that is what he's building. I follow my Jesus. And he offense come. I don't live for offenses. I live for Jesus. I don't live for the negatives. I don't look at the giants. I don't look at the problems and the annex and the Hittites and the whatever. I don't look at them. I don't care who's there. I look at Jesus. When you get into heaven and they say, why must we allow you here? You say, okay, it's not going to be like that. I'm going to remember. Just remember that when you get there, okay? What did you say? It's more a No, it's not that. It's not that. It's your faith in Jesus. That's it. Jesus is your key into heaven. But he's not the key that you put there in the cupboard. A golden key. That one key when you be 21, you got a key. 21. I don't know why they give the key. No one could ever explain that to me. And then when you're 80, you still have your 21 key. You forgot you're 80 now. <laughs> no, Jesus is the key. And he's on the inside. So you're the key to people's hearts and lives. With Jesus on the inside of you. With Jesus not on the inside of you, you're not a key. With Jesus in you, you're a key. You've been born a zero. You've been born a zero. And then when you're reborn, you get a one. So you become ten. So you're a 10. I'm a 10. So I'm a 10. 10 out of 10. Why? Jesus is number one. I'm the zero. He's the number one. So I'm 10. If I put that jacket on, I've got the one on. I'm dry. It's not in the boot. Tonight, come to church. Friday night, come. We have half night prayer. You say, what? Yes. Have you ever done that? No, I haven't. Well, it's time to maybe do that. What about the children? They should actually be here and see their mom and dad pray while they keep quiet. Sit. You remember, uh, some of you, remember this? You remember my part, the socky, socky, dance, dance. You remember those? And then where were you? By oma and opa. On the tafel, broer. But when it comes to church, sit down under the stool. Sit down under the anointing. Put your children under the anointing. Then automatically you will see. Not automatically. By the grace of God, they're going to change, 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 change. And you do nothing. You just bring them into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Because now the things you want to get out of them is not out of them because you left them somewhere. Or you all are somewhere and none of you have the rain jacket on in Jesus' name. Get it out. Get it out. Get it out. Get it on. Put on Jesus. Love Jesus. Get the unbelievable out and be believable in Jesus' name. Can you go to heaven? Yes, you can. How? Jesus. What do I need to do? I have to confess Him with the mouth. Believe in the heart. So I'm going to invite you to give your life to Jesus now. It is that easy. Not a list of things, but just to have faith in Jesus. Faith is a very great action. So I'm going to ask every head to bow, eyes to be closed. I want to pray with every one of you. And maybe it's your first time here. Last time that this church will be empty on that side. Students should be here and the uh, children should be here. They're never not here. We will do everything in our power to have them here. They need God. They are our future generation. But you are here. And that's the most important thing. And you've come here this morning and you feel lost. 
you feel guilty about things, you feel condemned, you feel so schuldig oor God, you feel empty on the inside, things are bothering you, maybe I said something in the service and it just hit you something like, I'm not sure what it is. You know that God don't want you to feel like that. But sometimes I think He allows us to feel like that so that we can come to decision. Come to the platform where you make a decision. Say, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm, I'm sick and tired of being tired now. I'm sick and tired of being a moaner, groaner. I want to be who Christ made me. But that becomes possible when you give your life to Him. I'm not asking you to go run around with the Bible. I'm asking you to give your life to Jesus. The rest is an automatic thing that comes, which you do never have to force. Why? Because He's loving you. He loves you like crazy. Like you go back home, in a normal home, you will go back to a dad and he will just love you. I might maybe, maybe correct you, maybe this, but you know you can go back there. That's God. He loves us. He loves us so much. No condemnation. Give your life to Jesus. If you go to, if you, if, if, if this is your last day on earth and you die, where will you go? Heaven or hell? And you say, I'm not sure. I really ask you to give your life to Jesus. I want every head bowed, eyes closed. If that is you, you feel lost, empty, you feel useless, you feel negative, down, you can't get out of that thing. It's just like, now you said something any about God and I really want to serve Him but it's difficult. I pray but you don't hear my prayers. Whatever it is. But you know you're not going to heaven. You feel you're not sure. I want to pray for you. If that is you, please, quickly, no one looking around, all heads bowed. And believers pray. This is spiritual. This is very important now. If that is you, quickly raise your hand and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you've never done that never gave your life to Jesus or you're not sure if you go to heaven and you say I really want to know I want to make I will not know when I walk out of this place I want to know my my life with God is right it's okay we we okay if that is you raise your hand quickly all over this place raise your hand high and say I want to give my life to Jesus all over this place lift your hands thank you God bless you God bless you all over this place this is important don't miss this you don't make right with God. You die, you go to hell. In other words, be re, be, being born again. Being born again is the most amazing present that you will ever have. You're not born again and you go like, I want to be born again. If that is you, raise your hand quickly all over this place. If you raise your hand, you can put it down. Thank you. God bless you. And maybe you did serve God. Maybe you did give your life to Jesus. You wandered away from Him. And you know it's time to come back. Hey, you here for a reason here this morning. You're not, you didn't come here for nothing. You came for a reason. You are listening to my voice for a reason. And that is because God wants you back. He wants you back. And by the way, He's standing right behind you. It's your time to turn around to Him. And say, Father, here I am. I'm coming back. In other words, you recommit back to God. So if you sit here and you say, I want to recommit my life back to God. I'm coming back to my Father. I'm coming back to my first love. If that is you... Just raise your hand quickly. Say, I was lost like that prodigal son. I'm just coming back. Thank you. God bless you all over this place. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can I ask everyone to please stand quickly? You can just stand. If you raised your hand, listen carefully. Don't sing now. If you raised your hands, if you, if you did not raise your hand, because sometimes I'm just afraid of what they're going to say. Can I ask you one thing? Be faithful. Of, or have faith step out of your chair walk to the front facing me and say I am giving my life to Jesus then, then, then before you do that before you do that wait, wait before you do that those of you not coming to the front that is saved you have a responsibility not to stare at me when I ask this but to make sure that the people around you because if you're not doing it here you're not even going to do it in the world out there so at least do it yet. This is church. This is, it's okay to do that. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'll go with you. Turn around and say, are you okay? Maybe you know each other. Maybe you know, don't know each other. And if I was sitting behind you and you asked me, I say, hey, can you see next to Redney? That's just me. But ignore people like me. Just do your part. Christian, if we're not doing our part, people will not be not getting saved. Amen. So I'm asking you. 
ask the person around you and say, I'll walk with you. Come. And they go, we go. If you raise your hand, if not raise your hand, but you know you should give your life to Jesus. It's just a desire in your heart. I want you to leave your seat and quickly come to the front facing me. Just come quickly. Ask your family. Ask the friends around you. In Jesus' name. Just come. Just come. Come, come, come. come. Bring your world. Bring your family. This is who we are. Come, come, come. Come on. Jesus loves you. Come on. You're most welcome. You are most welcome. Just come. If you're watching online, we're going to pray right now. Just wait a little bit. And I will lead you in a prayer. Everyone, bring your world. Come, come, come. What an amazing day. Come, come. My soul, my all belongs to you. Come on. Give your life to Jesus this morning. Just come, just come. You are worthy of it. Come on, you are worthy, God. Therefore, I give you my life. I surrender. I give you my life. Just come, just come. You can have my heart, my soul, my own. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a great privilege to have every one of you here at the front and watching online. And maybe you stand there. You're like, I don't even do it. It's okay, relax. You like me. Um, the only difference is you don't have a wheelchair. They pushed me to the front. Can you believe that? What may villa? Just do my foot. I'm going to put wheels on these chairs. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm glad you are here. You are. You are our precious gifts. Uh, uh, special guests. You are. This is what it's all about, is when you give your life to Jesus. And you know what? Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like um, envious because what you have now is very special. And, and many of us should go back to this day when we gave our lives to Jesus. And many of you have to pray this prayer and really believe it again. Give your life back to Jesus. Many of you. In all areas in your life. Stop the reasons and excuses. And when we get older, it's getting more difficult. We are now to start koppen geraak. Korrel koppen geraak. I mean, not say me. Can't tell me anything. Don't be like that. Be a child in the presence of God. Like every one of you, in Jesus' name. What a great honor and privilege to pray with you. And you're going to see, after this prayer, you will like that breath, that new. And that's just amazing and a privilege. Everywhere. If you're watching online, listening to me, um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus by praying with me. Pray loud. The Bible says, you confess with the mouth. You say it and you believe it in the heart. The following prayer. Amen. Put your hand upon your heart like this. I just do that so that you feel there's a heartbeat. If there's a heartbeat, you can be saved. That's it. And then you pray this prayer to Jesus. And you say, Jesus, I invite you into my life. Come stay in my heart forever. Jesus, I surrender it all you died on the cross for my sin you died on the cross for my past and your blood washed me clean of everything of my past and future thank you Jesus for this assurance that I am saved Jesus I believe you're the son of God I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you're alive today. Even in my heart. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I'm reborn forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says you pray that prayer based on your confession of your faith. You are now children of God and your sins are forgiven you have a new page a new life a new everything go write this date down your birth date your real birth date uh, your spiritual birth date and this is when you get into heaven well guess what you're not they're not going to ask you anything you're just going to go and then Jesus stands one day but please don't die today it's not the idea <laughs> amen you are alive today and what a great privilege and honor if you're online you watch us, listen to us, please contact us. 
Some of you know me personally. Please come to me. And I want to walk with you this journey. There's a few things that you have to learn now, which you did not learn. The world taught you something different. And now we're going to teach you. Amen. But for now, we just want to give you something in your hand here in this building. And uh, I'm going to ask you to do it with Chantel. And then you can join us in the service right after this. It's just the right the corner here. So you can quickly go with her, give you something, pray with you. Come on, families, give God a big shout of praise. If you're listening, watching online, contact us. Please contact us. Very important. Seriously important. Come on, let's give God a big praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated and watch the screens. Send a warm welcome to you on behalf of Pastor Henny and Delissa van der Merwe. We are thrilled to have you in the house here with us today, especially our first time visitors. You are welcome to join us tomorrow night for our leaders meeting with Pastor Henny van der Merwe at 6 p.m. All are welcome. On Tuesday night at 6, we have new members orientation. At new members orientation, you find out more about CRC and what we stand for. You will also learn about the importance of being planted in the house of God. Psalm 92, 12 to 13, encourage us to be planted in the house of the Lord so that we may flourish in the courts of our God. Family, we are super excited for our half night prayer coming up this Friday night at 6 p.m. Join us for an unforgettable and fire-filled evening right here at CRC Bombela. You do not want to miss out on this. So we're going to talk about it's all about the heart, all right? So how are we going to develop uh, a generous heart? It's, it's all about giving, okay? And it's about the heart. Why did God invent giving? Listen, God did not create giving for His sake. He created giving for your sake. The earth is the Lord's and all those who dwell in it. Don't ever grieve when you give back to God what's already His. It is now time to bring our tithes and offerings into the house of the Lord. We kindly ask you that you remain seated while the ushers get ready to take up our tithes and offerings. Family, please also note that for your security, the doors of the church will be closed until the service ends. We will now be blessed with an amazing item. God bless. God bless. 